Acts chapter 19. And it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, so the church in Corinth, Corinthians had Apollos at Paul, Paul, having, pra having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus, Ephesians, and finding certain disciples, he said unto them, Have ye received the Holy Ghost since ye believe? And they said unto him, We have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. Well, look at that. You're going to base today's church upon Acts. Here are disciples. They are disciplined to follow the Lord. And they're not saved. Because they don't have the Holy Ghost. And he said unto them, Unto what then were you baptized? And they said, Unto John's baptism. So here comes John's baptism again. Then said Paul, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they, sh that they should believe on him who should come after him, John, that is, on Christ Jesus. John baptized a nation for repentance in the coming of Jesus Christ. The Messiah, the Israelites. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul had laid his hands on them, the Holy Ghost came on them. And they spanked with tongues and prophesied. Still, these guys are Jewish. Were still flavored with Jewish. The Holy Ghost does not come in as he does the believers today when they get saved. The day I got saved, the Holy Spirit came in. I repented of my sins. I was washed of my sins. The Holy Spirit came in and he found a clean house. Now, I don't know how long afterwards I started filling it with sin again. But 1 John 1, 9, if I confess my sins, he is faithful and just to forgive me of my sins. I'm washed. I'm clean. The Holy Spirit came in a new residence. On an April Saturday afternoon, in 1987, the Holy Spirit came into me. I was sealed, signed, and delivered, adopted by God through the gospel. The Holy Ghost dwelling with me that he'll never leave me. So, this part of Acts was still got some, if I could say, scriptural weirdness going on of salvation. I don't know how else to put it. It's it's not church age, and yet it's correct. And when Paul had laid his hands upon them, the Holy Ghost came in, came on them. The Holy Ghost came in me, not on me. And they spanked with tongues and prophesied signs. And all the men were about twelve. Interesting number. Twelve tribes of Israel. 12 land divisions of Israel, the land of Israel. And he went into the synagogue, that's, that's Paul's operation, and spake boldly for the space of three months. So Ephesians, he's there for three months. Corinth, he's there for a year and six months. Disputing and persuading the things concerning the kingdom of God. He's got to fight with them. He's got to argue with them. He's got to persuade them. It was no easy task. He doesn't say, okay, this is, we're going to read uh, uh, Leviticus. All right, this is, all right, yay. No, it was. And when divers, different kinds, were hardened and believed not. But spank evil of that way before the multitude. They criticized, they scorned Paul's message, the gospel. Because they wouldn't do that today. He departed from them and separated the disciples. Oh, look at that. Here's another division. There's another separation. Disputing daily in the school of one Tyrannus, I wonder if his last name was Rex, 
and this continued by the space of two years. So that all they which dwell in Asia heard the word of the Lord Jesus, both Jews and Greeks. What is Paul doing? He's teaching and preaching. Those that are lost, he's showing them, hey, listen, this is the scriptures. This is Christ Jesus. Those that are saved, he's trained them. He's showing them what to do. And he's sending them out. As a result of that, and being in seaports, Paul was no dummy. Sailors, passengers of these ships would take the gospel that Paul's preaching and go all over the place. Uh, according to, like I said, I do not know these dates, okay? According to what's written here, whether right or wrong, I have no say. I, I don't know. This is AD 56. First Corinthians, they say, is written 55 AD. Second Corinthians is written 56 AD. So while Paul is, it looks like, looks like while Paul is in Ephesians or Ephesus, he's writing to the Corinthians, the church of Corinth. And these letters would be sent to Corinth. Now you're starting to get the Bible. Ephesians, Ephesus has not been written yet. But possibility Corinthians, both first and second, while Paul is here. He's got two years. He can sit down now and write out. Checking on those Corinthians. Say, how you doing? He was there for a year and six months. He's checking on making sure. And God wrought special miracles by the hands of Paul. <coughs> so there are Jews there. So that from his body were brought unto the sick handkerchiefs or aprons. Now you see where some of the healers get it? it used to be a big thing when I, when I would say the handkerchiefs. You could send away and get a handkerchief. And the diseases departed from them. And the evil spirits went out of them. So, and this again, this is not the power of Paul. This is the power of God. The scriptures have not been written yet. They have not been published yet. Then certain of the vagabond Jews, troublemakers. These are gypsy Jews not being in the temple. They called themselves Jews, but they didn't have anything to do with the Jews. Exorcists. And you thought that was a Roman Catholic word. You thought that was a Hollywood word. Took upon them to call over them which had evil spirits in the name of the Lord Jesus. Saying, we adjure you, the devils, by Jesus whom Paul preaches. That sounds good, doesn't it? And there were seven sons of one Sceva, that's a type of Jew, I assume, a Jew, and chief of the priests, which did so. So this guy's a priest doing exorcisms, and you thought Roman Catholics had it. Stealing from the Jews. And the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus I know. James 2.19 And Paul I know. The devils knew Paul. But who are ye? The devils didn't know the, these Jews. And the question is, are you known by the devils of hell? When you get up and go somewhere, does Satan got does he gotta call his his warriors out and say, you know what, he's gonna try to get someone saved today? We've got to stop that seed, parable of the sower. He's gonna somehow get seed out. I don't know how he's gonna do it. Well, he's gonna to talk to somebody, but he's gonna open up a Bible, he's gonna pass out a gospel track, or he's gonna go open his mouth. But you guys better be on guard for Paul. And the men 
and, excuse me, and the man in whom the evil spirit was leaped on them and overcame them and prevailed against them so that they fled out of the house naked and wounded. The guy became clean, but the devils jumped on the, on the exorcists, the Jews. They overpowered the men that were trying to do the exorcism. Don't get involved with exorcisms if you don't have the power of God. This was known to all the Jews and Greeks also dwelling at Ephesus. This is Ephesus. When Paul writes Ephesians, yeah, you remember those Jews that tried to do the exorcism, guys? And taking context, what he's writing, what has happened in the book of Acts with these churches. And fear fell on them all, and the name of the Lord Jesus Christ was magnified. Look at that. These idiots brought honor to Jesus Christ. And many that believed came and confessed and showed their deeds. How do you like that? They showed that they had belief in Jesus Christ. They proved it. Many of them also which used curious arts. Magical. Satanic. Religious. Brought their books together and burned them before all men. Here's a book burning. A good book burning. These men got so saved, they grabbed all their non-Christian books and burned them. And they counted the price of them and found it 50,000 pieces of silver. God said, God told the Holy Spirit and, and Luke, write down how much that cost, because I'm putting it on their account. Those books were a pretty dime, and they burned them. And so mightily grew the word of God and prevailed. After these things were ended, Paul supposed in the spirit when he had passed through Macedonia and Acadia to go to Jerusalem saying, after I had been there, I must also see Rome. So, Paul knows that God wants him in Rome. Well, what book are you going to get from there? Romans. You're going to get Romans. So Romans has not been written yet. So he went, no, excuse me. So he sent into Macedonia two of them that ministered unto him, to Moses, Timothy, and Aratus. But he himself stayed in Asia for a season. Well, look how long he's been there. He's got time to write the first and second Corinthian epistles. And the same, and by the way, when he hears what's going on in the Corinthian church. I guarantee that's coming off the boats, the news, the gossip. Hey, did you hear this group of people over there in Corinth? Oh, what's going on? Man, they got one guy over there. He's sleeping with his father's wife, and they just let him. Paul's like, what? And he's also getting a report from other Christians. You won't believe what that church is doing, Paul. You got to do something about it. And they're not gossiping or gossiping. They're like, they need to be corrected. So Paul's got the main route to the mail, to the news, to the gossip being in these seaports. And at the same time, there arose no small stir about that way. What way? Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the light. It's that way. For a certain man named Demetrius, a silversmith, which made silver shrines for Diana, Brought no small gain unto the craftsman. He's making a profit in the craftsman. But whatever knick-knack patty wax he's making for Diana. Well, geez, you know, it's not Mary. Knows that? You figured they'd be worshipping Mary by now. They're worshipping some woman called Diana. Whom he had called together with the workmen of like occupation. And said, sirs... Ye know that by this craft we have our wealth. They're making a bundle. 
Moreover, ye see and hear that not alone at Ephesus, but almost throughout all Asia, this Paul has persuaded and turned away much people. You have seen and hear. Do you think these guys are going into synagogue and church service every Sunday morning to hear Paul? He's got to be preaching on the street. He's got to be preaching wherever he can preach. That these guys, hey, you see what he's doing over there? Do you hear what he's preaching? That guy is so loud. We're trying to sell our vegetables. I'm oh, sorry. Excuse me. I'm doing exactly what Paul's doing. Preaching on the streets, the gospel. And people are getting upset. Thank you. You proved the Bible to me. Jesus said, marvel not the world hates you. But almost throughout all Asia, this Paul has persuaded and turned away much people, saying that there, saying that they be no gods which are made with hands. Now you know Paul was saying that. He said that on Mars Hill, remember? So what is Paul preaching? He's preaching against the idolatry of Asia. He's nailing it down. And he's got these people who make knick-knack patty wax. He's got them upset. Because their people are not buying them anymore. Now you got to remember, do many people get saved or do few people get saved? Yeah. Few. So you can't say that their occupation has been completely killed. They're losing few dollars. But still they're losing amount. So that not only this, our craft is in danger to be set at naught. That'd be nice if it would happen, wouldn't it? But I don't think that Diana would be completely turned away and Jesus would be promoted among the city because that's just not going to happen. I'd like to see it happen, but many go the broad way. Few go in the straight. But also that the temple of great goddess Diana should be despised. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on. Let's get to the thing. This should be despised. We are so in love with our god, god goddess Diana, but we're going to lose our money first before her temple. We're going to lose our craft. Then, oh, think about her temple. Well, isn't that interesting? They're thinking about their pocketbook more than they're thinking about their God. It's money first, then the God. Now, they're in Ephesus, right? Paul writes to the church in Ephesus. What is in Ephesus? There is this great goddess Diana in her temple. That's another thing we need to know. Ephesus has got gods all over the place, including a statue and an altar to the unknown God. There's just gods and goddesses everywhere. And when you read the, the writings that Paul writes back to these churches, look back at Acts, look at the situation that these churches are in. Here is a place Christians trying to live with this Diana worship and these guys selling this crap. And they're upset because you are turning people away from their crap. They've already burnt their books. I guarantee the Christians in Ephesus got rid of knick-knack patty wax and they wouldn't sell it back to them. They probably melted them down or broke them or whatever. So here's Diana be despised after their money. And her magnificence should be destroyed. She had a beautiful temple just like the one in Jerusalem. what it says whom all Asia and the world worshipeth and the, well yeah the world known of, of this time yeah they probably come all around and come to visit Diana the whole world mourned when our Diana of our time got killed in a drunken accident that whole mess over there in England there's a Diana for every age.
These people who come to Diana every whatever time they would come. I don't know. I don't care. But, but these idiots would sell the Diana shrines and they would buy them. You say, well, what's that like? You ever see people walking around with a, with a little Jewish hat with two black ears attached to it? You ever see someone's car with bumper stickers? We climbed here. We've been here. We've done this. You ever go in someone's house? They got a spoon from Washington, D.C. Or they got a hat from this. That's the same. That's Diana's junk. It's souvenirs. I've been trying to think of it. It's souvenirs that we went to Ephesus. That's what it is. And when they heard these things, they were full of wrath. What are you getting so upset about? Calm down, relax. And cried out saying, Great is Diana the Ephesians. I know they cry out here to me. Shut up, you're too loud. Leave me, I'm gonna go there. I'm gonna live forever. I'm gonna live forever. You have to watch today's video. And the whole city was filled with confusion. And having caught Gaius. And Aristarchus, men of Macedonia, Paul's companions in travel, they rushed with one accord into the theater. They didn't just do that in Thyatira. They grabbed a couple Christians. Aren't you glad that God's given us grace in America? Aren't you glad you can pass out gospel tracts and preach the truth to some people here and they don't Put you into a Cadillac and drive you off somewhere. It may happen. And when Paul would have entered in unto the people, the disciple, the disciples suffered him not. They didn't allow him. Stop it, Paul. And certain of the chief of Asia, which were his friends, Paul has got friends in higher up places. Sent on him, desiring him that he would not adventure himself into the theater. People who have authority in Asia are telling Paul, now get this, do not go to the theater. How's that? You can preach that. You might take it a little bit of out of context, but you can preach that. Paul, don't go to the theater. Some therefore cried one thing and some another. For the assembly was confused, and the more part knew not whether they were come together. Try to read my note here. There are three groups, and one group had no idea what the other group is complaining about. <laughs> and they drew Alexander out of the multitude. The Jews put him forward, and Alexander beckoned with his hand and would have made his defense unto the people. But when they knew that he was a Jew, all with one voice about the space of two hours cried, Great is Diana of the Ephesians. Man, there is this chaos going on here. Crying out to Diana. Does she ever answer? No. And when the town clerk had appeased the people, he said, Ye men of Ephesus, what man is there that knoweth not how that the city of Ephesians is a worshiper of the great goddess Diana and of the image which fell down from Jupiter. What's that all about? I have no idea. I don't want to know. But Paul and Silas were called a representative of a couple planets earlier. So they are worshiping the planets and the stars. They would open up the daily Ephesian and define their horoscope about Jupiter, the alignment of Jupiter or something. They are confessing themselves that they're pagans and idolaters. Seeing then that these things cannot be spoken against, you ought to be quiet and to do nothing rashly. We need somebody to stand up right now in America and say that to the Democrats. You need to shut up. This is the same thing going on in America 2016 today. They're out in the streets and they don't even know what they're out in the streets for. Don't you love how the Bible is so current? 
For ye have brought hither these men, they're just named, which are neither robbers of churches, nor yet blasphemers of your godness. Now how's that? An unsaved idolatry said those Christians, those men, have a good report of the heathen. They haven't touched your God. They have not robbed our churches. You are at fault. Do you see what your Christian life has to conduct as? You've got to remain clean. You've got to do right. So if somebody ever did call the cops on us, the cops would say, you know what? We have no trouble with you guys. You do what you're supposed to do, even we don't believe it, even though we don't regard it, but you have not caused any trouble. And the complaints that we hear from the town people and all that, uh, we got to say they're lying because that's not you. Can you, can you faithfully say that? I know people go knocking on doors. You know, somebody called the cops and said, those people come with, I wouldn't listen to them. They kicked all my roses and stuff like that. And the cops will say, no, I don't think so. That church, those people are not that type. Wherefore, if Demetrius and the craftsmen which are with him have a matter against any man, the law is open, there are deputies, let them in plead one of the Demetrius, you got a problem? You march your butt down the courthouse and you follow the papers and you do it that way. This stuff you just did this afternoon, crying out and, and rooting and routing and, and you're wrong. And these men you, you say are trouble, they're not, they're not trouble. You realize what this, this town clerk said? Demetrius, you got trouble going down to the courthouse, but guess what? You're not going to win. <laughs> Because these guys are faithful. And he told them to shut up. To be quiet. In the Greek that meant shut up. But if he inquire anything concerning other matters. It shall be determined in a lawful assembly. You guys do not have a lawful assembly here. These Americans out crying because they didn't get their way. You have an unlawful assembly. And we need a town clerk to speak up and say, you're doing it wrong. For we are in danger to be called in question for this day's uproar. We're the guilty ones. There being no cause whereby we may give an account of this concord. We can't even have a plea but guilty for what we just did. And when he had thus spoken, he dismissed the assembly. Get out of here, guys. And the apostles and the disciples didn't have to say one word. The heathen said it for them. And the heathen condoned his own people because they were the wrong ones. Because disciple, disciple means someone who's disciplined. Their lives are disciplined. Even though they may not agree with Jesus, even though they may not agree with the message Paul's preaching, they do have a conduct that's correct and proper. That's what our lives to be. It ought to be hard for any civil authority to have to arrest a Christian. Look how hard it was for Jesus. Pilate said there three times, I cannot find no fault in this guy. I want to let him go. Peter and John in the beginning of Acts, we don't want you to preach in this name. Name? That's it? That's all you're offended at? Offended at you mean they didn't break windows? They didn't set things? No. They preached a name. Peter is beaten for preaching a name. Paul is stoned for preaching a name. Paul is persecuted and run out of town for preach. They're not persecuted because they they uh, they went default on a loan. They're not being persecuted because they caused a ruckus. They are in trouble for preaching a name. And yet their lives and their conduct are proper and lawful and right. 
That's the testimony of a Christian. If anybody's going to be wrong, let the world be wrong. And let God take care, take care of it. Like I said, none of the disciples said a word here. The world condemned the world. And everyone broke away, went home, and it looks like the, you know, the crickets are now being heard. That's what it looks like at the end of this chapter. Now the crickets can cricket themselves. Because everyone's gone. And Diane is still there, and Paul's still going to preach. And Paul's like, I'm not going to force you to get saved. It's your choice. You want Diana? You take Diana. There she is. You want Jesus Christ? You come to me. I'll show you Jesus Christ. I plead with the people that I preach with on the street. If you want to get saved, I'll show you how to do it. But if you don't, there's hell. You don't like the preaching of hell? Well, that's where you're going to go. Plain and simple.